Guess who has to film again? Hello, Zuko here. I'm trying to be kind of palatable because this video might get viewed outside of Spooky Month and I want to look kind of normal. Not like super normal. I got my my, my jack-o'-lantern shirt on. It's covered in dog hair. My dogs are black, so their hair shows up on anything that isn't also black. I filmed this and then realized I was in a weird frame so the books were not being shown. <laughs> so we're gonna film it again. So this is my fall book haul. I was going to post this in November and film it later but I ended up with like 60 something books to haul and I'm tired of them not being on my shelves because they're kind of a mess and a hassle and I'm running up storage space to just keep them in stacks until I can post this. So we're gonna start with the special editions because I feel like that's what everyone wants to see the most. So we got all my exclusive editions first. We will do my graphic novels, we will do YA books, and then we will do the adult books. So join me as I film this first part a second time, but at least I only filmed the special editions, so I didn't get too far into it. And yeah, let's jump right in to my book haul for fall. Okay, we're gonna start with Lore Olympus Volume 2. This is the Illumicrate exclusive edition. I don't think it's like that special. Oh, mine has like a kind of fucked up little page there. That's fun. Yeah, I don't think that this is really special except it's got like foiling on the cover and these um, ombre spread edges. Then I have Wolf Song by TJ Kloon. This is a beginning of a series that I think was originally published and is getting a republication with Waterstones and maybe just in the UK in general as hardbacks. And this is the Waterstones exclusive edition. The edges look like this. Aren't they beautiful? Yes, we all know they are. Yeah, I have this. It's beautiful. Then I guess I'm just gonna go through all the Waterstones books I have. And the next one is Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This is the Waterstones exclusive edition. I'm sad that I didn't get the Fairy Loot exclusive edition because it is a full yellow book and yellow is my favorite color. So I just want more yellow on my shelves, but this does have yellow sprayed edges. I do not know what this book is about, but it was really pretty and I wanted it. And I, it, I've seen it on a spooky list. So I might read it this month if I run out of horror. So yeah. Then I have The Book Eaters by Senye Dean. I don't really know what this book is about, but this is the only edition of this book that I currently have. This is the Waterstones edition. I believe Illumicrate is doing this for September, but since I am not located in the UK, my box has yet to be shipped as of filming this video because they're having international shipping problems. So that's fun. I don't really know what this book is about. I've heard it's like horror and it's like people who eat books, but one of them has a baby who eats brains and then it's like a really motherly book, but I have no idea. I could be making that up completely. Maybe I'll read this this month if I, oh, once there was a mother who fed on stories and would do anything to survive is what the back says. Maybe I'll read this this month. <laughs> I'm so ambitious in my October TBR, but maybe. Uh. Okay, we have some fairy loots and some Aluma crates here. We have the fairy loot exclusive of The Darkening by Sanya Mara. I have no idea what this book is about. Just shut up at my house one day. Here are what the edges look like. Um, underneath looks like this and it has these inserts on the, the pages. So um, the back are these people. I don't know. It wasn't on my radar. We have This Vicious Grace by Emily Theed. This is my favorite color of yellow. I'm assuming that this is also a YA fantasy of some kind that I did not have on my radar. We have The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones and I think this is a companion novel to like the House of Bones or something set in the same world. I don't know, this was an Illumicrate book. Looks like this in the pages. It's really pretty underneath though, so that's fun. But yeah, I have no idea what this is about. Another YA fantasy, I think. Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. And I have no idea what this book is about. It's got gorgeous ombre spray edges. Again, pretty sure this is also has like a nice printed on hardback, which is always my favorite. Just aesthetically, a little signed card for the inside instead of actually physically signing the books, which is fine because I don't really care because I don't know anything about this book and I, I doubt I'm gonna enjoy it. It's another YA fantasy, I think, that I don't care about. <laughs> have the paperback uh, fairy loot edition of Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. I think this is a book about two princesses who have to fight for the crown. I don't know. It's pretty. Looks like this. I have no idea what this book's about, really. I haven't heard of it, aside from Waterstones did two really um, beautiful sprayed edges, but I think the book was only out in paperback, and that's not my vibe. I don't like paperback books. I'm sorry. I'm snobby. Then we have the gorgeous fairy loot edition of Babel. Looks like this. It's so shiny. It's just a brilliant looking book. They really outdid themselves with these sprayed edges. 
it's just so pretty. It looks like this underneath. It's got some character art on the end pages. It's just so pretty. I, I'm obsessed with how good this looks, but I'm not sure if I like this one more or the Only Crate Edition, which has this little slip case. And it says an act of translation is always an act of betrayal and the sprayed edges. And it looks like this. It's just beautiful. Like these books are gorgeous. And I really hope that I actually love reading them or else I'm just going to have these two incredibly beautiful editions of books that I don't like. And that's so scary to me because they're so pretty. I'm not going to be able to get rid of them if I don't like them. Okay, and lastly, for exclusive editions, I'm sorry I rushed through that. I've already done this before and I truly don't give a shit about what these four books are about because they're all just like, it's going to be a really generic fantasy. I'm I'm willing to bet money. Um, But lastly, I have Scythe, Thunderhead, and The Toll, I believe, by Neil Shusterman. These are all the Fairy Loot exclusive editions. Their sprayed edges are all little scythes. They have the scythe on the back. That's book one. This is book two. Edges look like that. Oops, don't fall. Look like that. They have character art in them. Um, they're just beautiful. Like the inside looks like this. They've got like reversible dust jackets. Not that I think anybody ever reverses their dust jackets because they're kind of folded to be the way that they are. Character art in there. These books are just gorgeous. I'm really um, not sure if I'm gonna keep my original editions or if I'm gonna donate them to a school because these are really good books and I think that they're really good books like for a YA audience. So I feel like a school would really like having them. But at the same time, I kind of really like having two copies. These are beautiful. Even the original hardbacks of the Scythe books are just really pretty. <laughs> so it's like, do I get rid of one or do I keep them both for myself? unclear. Okay, while we're here, I'm going to quickly do the graphic novels that I've bought. We have Chivalry by Neil Gaiman, illustrated, I believe, by Colleen Doran. This is, I don't know, I had The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman, and I just figured I would purchase the other two of his graphic novels. This is Snow Glass Apples, both by Neil Gaiman. I don't know what this one is, but I think this is a reimagining of Snow White. I have these, kind of excited about them kind of nervous. We have Cryptid Club, The Cover Glows in the Dark. It's by Sarah Anderson, who is Sarah Scribbles on the internet. She makes like cute relatable comics. She also wrote Fangs and made that graphic novel slash webcomic, I think. Cute little book of weird cryptids, I think. And it's got pink sprayed edges. So that's super fun. I have Spooning written by my friend Sam. This was their first ever NaNoWriMo novel. And that's how I met them at a write-in with our local NaNoWriMo group. And this was their first novel. And they promised me a copy almost 10 years ago and I just got my copy now I gave them my code for winning to get like two copies of your book printed Sam just like asked they're like can I get more books printed like can I have your code I was like sure I was supposed to get a copy and it took almost 10 years I think it'll be 10 years next year so this uh, th this book has been <laughs> waiting nine years for me to read they also annotated I believe the first like 18 pages, which is super cute. I'm very excited to eventually read that. We have The Mighty Nine Origins, Yasha Nidoran. This is a prequel comic to the Mighty Nine campaign two story uh, following Yasha. So yeah, that's all I really know about it. Haven't read any of these yet. I'm kind of waiting for them all to come out. And also I'm like, I'm, I'm struggling because I miss campaign two and don't want to get into campaign three as much. I, I bought the the hardcover of Dream Daddy, a dad dating comic book, because I like hardback comic books and it was super on sale. So I bought it. This is based on the Game Grumps game, Dream Daddy, which I've never played because of course I haven't. I have Dungeon Critters by Natalie Reese and Sarah Goddard. And this just looked like a cute, like animals D&D book. <laughs> and I liked it. It's cute. So I bought it. And then, okay, very excited. I actually, I got an arc in the mail. And I must have like entered a Goodreads contest, but I don't remember. I always avoid ARCs because I don't like having paperback books, but I got an ARC in the mail. It's very strange. So I have the ARC of A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. This is book two in the Monk and Robot duology, I think. So that was kind of exciting. It's my first ARC. And I, I again, I, I think it's from a giveaway. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't remember entering a giveaway, but I have this. I also at my local years used bookstore found the like omnibuses for Saga, uh, book one and two. So I picked these up because everyone always raved about how good these are. And this one has plastic on it still, but I got these for a steal of a deal. Like this one had plastic on it a second ago, but my local used bookstores charges half price. And then if you have credit, 
your credit is used for half of the price of that. So I paid like a quarter of retail value for these two. So that was very exciting. It was a very cool find for me. And then I also bought the really pretty edition of Sandman book one by Neil Gaiman because I've always wanted to read Sandman and I never have. So I have this. And lastly, for graphic novels, I have The Last Session Volume 1 Roll for Initiative by Wallace, Dozer, Draws, and Myers. This is another like D&D kind of graphic novel. And I thought that that was cute. So I picked it up. I miss Dungeons and Dragons. I haven't played in almost a year. Okay, on to YA. I almost fell off this chair. We'll start off with my shame. That is that I bought another copy of New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. This is the uh, movie edit tie-in edition of the paperback. <laughs> and normally I wouldn't buy them, but it's Twilight, so... That's my whole excuse for that. And I also have the paperback for Eclipse, which is absolutely beautiful. So I bought these. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Have you ever pre-ordered like a whole series and forgot you pre-ordered the second book and you read the first book and you're like, I don't care enough to continue on with the series, but you forget. And then the second book shows up and you're just like, oh good. Now I have the sequel. A Venom Dark and Sweet by Judy Eilin. <laughs> I read the first one. It was fine for like the, it was really predictable and it was boring but like it was a, it was an interesting enough like concept of tea magic i liked that the love interest and stuff was like all stupid and i didn't like it i zoned out the last four hour hours of the audiobook so i think i missed the last quarter because i didn't care and then this showed up so i have this i'm hauling it and eventually you'll see it in an unhaul because this should go to a school division and not to me. Then I have Blood and Moonlight by Erin Beatty. And I don't remember what this one's about or what made me buy it. Oh, it's about hunting for a serial killer and I'm like magic. Yeah, I have this. <laughs> don't really remember much about it, but I have it and it's got a beautiful cover. So, you know, here's my peak consumerist bullshit. I bought Winter Keep, the fourth book in the Graceling Realm series by Kristen Kishore. I haven't read the first three books. I Ooh, it's cute underneath. I don't own the first three books. I don't know when I'll get to trying the first three, three books, but this was signed and it was the only signed edition at my bookstore. So I bought it because I have FOMO. So first thing I have Go Hunt Me, this might be a queer vampire novel. I don't know. I'm a sucker for vampires. That wasn't supposed to be a pun, but it came out as a pun. So I have this one. I also have Youngblood by Sasha Lawrence and um, this cover is really pretty, but I've heard this might be like kind of problematic. A queer vampire book and I bought it and it's here so I'm gonna read it. I have The Honeys by Ryan Lasala and this is a really fun YA horror book. It is queer, it is set in a like weird prestigious summer camp. There's just a weird group of girls who have exclusive rights to beekeeping. He goes to the summer camp to figure out like what might have happened. His sister died of a brain tumor but he wonders what the people who went to this camp with her thought about her before she died so. Is this? That was a really good book, by the way, if you want to read like a YA horror. Or I suppose you could read Hell Follows With Us by Andrew Joseph White, which is a trans body horror, end of the world doomsday cult Christian horror story about a kid who grew up in a radical Christian settlement during the end of the world. And they are being turned into a monster to support these Christian people's needs and they don't want to, so they escape. I don't super remember a lot about this book, but I do recommend it, read it. Unless you really don't like body horror, then don't read it. Then I got matchy matchy editions of Te Tithe, Teeth, Valiant, and Ironside, the trilogy Holly Black wrote, a modern fairy tale trilogy that she wrote before she wrote A Cruel Prince. I liked The Cruel Prince and I really liked The Darkest Part of the Forest. So I had a chance to buy all three of these in a matching edition. So I did, and I'm gonna put them away right now. I think The Darkest Part of the Forest is still my favorite and it deserves an edition that matches all of the other Fae books. Cause it's like, I don't think you can see it, but it's got, all of the other ones are like this size and then it is this size. So it just doesn't match. And all of the others are white and it is foresty colors. <laughs> so I hope that eventually it gets a reprint because I love that book a lot. Then I have The Sunbearer's Trial by Aidan Thomas. I think this is like a queer Hunger Games kind of book and I've heard really good things so I'm very excited to get to it eventually. That's all I know. Aidan Thomas is the author of Cemetery Boys. They have incredibly disappointed me with their last book like The Neverwood or whatever. It's one of the worst books I read last year. I hope that they can redeem themselves because everyone really loves Cemetery Boys and I thought it was just okay. So I hope I really like this book because everyone talks about how good Annie Thomas is and I've been like kind of underwhelmed. Then I have Ravenfall by Caitlin Joseph. Nope. Josephson? Yeah. I think this might be a YA haunted house book. I don't know. I might try and read this book this month if I run out of spooky because 
I don't know, looks October-y. I got a hardback copy of Vanille Gaiman's The Graveyard Book with illustrations by Dave McKeon because I read The Graveyard Book a couple of spooky seasons ago and I really liked it and I wanted an actual like hardback copy instead of the paperback copy that I have because I'm spoiled. So I bought that. That's a book about a kid who's raised by ghosts in a graveyard. I have Wildbound by Elaine Audrey Becker. This is a YA fantasy duology. I believe and this is book number two and I don't know anything else about it but my friend highly recommended it so I have it. I have Aces Wild by Amanda Dewitt. This is supposed to be it was like marketed as like fully asexual cast but Six of Crows and I know there was like a shitty element initially of the main character using their sister's hearing aids to make some kind of spy gear without their permission and I think that was changed in the final printing but that's kind of iffy and I've heard it's actually nothing like Six of Crows and very boring compared to Six of Crows if you go and expect it to be Six of Crows. But I'm excited for more asexual stories being told so I have it. Whether or not it's any good is TBD. And then I have Afterlife by Tanya Byrne. This was in a book box last year I feel like. The paperback came out and it was just released in hardback here so I have it. I feel like it's about like Grim Reapers but it's queer. I don't know. I don't know. I have it here you see it you see it with your eyes where am i gonna put the rest of these fucking books oh no i think really quickly we can go through the one non-fiction book that i have purchased in the last couple of months and that is i'm glad my mom died by jeanette mccurdy i have it it's here it's beautiful it's weird that it has the isbn and the price on the front but it's beautiful i'm excited to own it to support jeanette mccurdy not that i think at this point she needs anyone else's support we, the whole world just went i want to hear your story but i have it after i've already listened to the audiobook which i highly recommend first i have known in the night this is the third book in the locked tomb series this is by tamson muir i'm done talking about this book right now you can go and look through my backlog and listen to me talk about this book if you want to or don't this is the third in a trilogy if you don't know what the book series is about necromancers in space thank you prayer for the crown shy by becky chambers but a full hardback edition this is the second book in the monk and robot duology as i said these are just like a really cozy book about kind of deciding whether or not your life has purpose if you're not doing anything to help the people around you i guess and one of my friends put it in their review that it is just two genderless beings talking about life and it is and i love these books and I recommend them very much. They're weird sci-fi. If the fact that it's a monk and robot didn't clue you in. There are so many fucking books here. <laughs> Why? Why do I have so many books? We're just gonna start with Eric LaRocca. They wrote Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, which came out last year, which was like a weird horror shock value gore book, kind of like the Saw movies. And <laughs> so for this year, for Halloween month, I have Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke and Other Misfortunes, which I believe is three short stories. I don't know. It doesn't say anywhere how many are on here, but I have it. We have <laughs> me throwing things. We have We Can Never Leave This Place. I don't know what it's about, but I really like the covers on the front. Covers, colors. And You've Lost a Lot of Blood. Do I know what it's about? No, but I have them. I really love that none of these books match each other at all. Like the... The covers I'll do, but the spines and shit, just absolutely not. Not done. I want to be done. We have Jelly by Claire Reese, and I've heard this is just like a fucked up weird book. I don't know. The cover, the cover sold me. Ooh, it's pretty underneath. The cover sold me. I don't know what the story is. Heard it's weird. I have no fucking clue. We have Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. Yoder? I want to say this is about a woman who thinks she's turning into a dog or maybe she is turning into a dog. Yeah, I don't know. This is a horror book. I have it. We have a Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. This is a like space horror, maybe isolation-y book about I think a crew who goes into an abandoned spaceship looking for the crew of that ship and doesn't find them. Yeah, I'm excited. I love me some horror. I have Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This is, I think, a familial horror book. A, like, revisiting your past kind of horror book by Sarah Gailey, who has written a couple of things that I've read and kind of enjoyed, at least. I also have The Echo Wife by Sarah Gailey. I don't know what this one's about, but I have it. It's here. We have Witness for the Dead by Catherine Addison, set in the world of the Goblin Emperor. I wanted more goblin books and I think this one was marketed as queer. We have A Strange and Stubborn Endurance by Foz Meadows and I don't really know what this book is about but I know it's very hyped up in, in little queer pockets so I'm excited to get to this but I have no idea what it's about. The Battle of the Linguist Mages by Scott O'More. That title was it. That's all I needed to know. It's what, yeah, that's enough. That was enough for me. I just, I was like, yes, sold. Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. This is 
I think this was my first T. Kingfisher book and since reading this I've read all three of T. Kingfisher's horror novels that they have out or they're two novels and they're one novella. I love their writing style. I love the way that like it just really vibes with me and this is their like fantasy standalone about a girl who's trying to save her sister from a horrible marriage and it involves a bone dog, a witch, and a chicken that might be a demon. I loved this. This was amazing. Then I have Leech by Hyren Ennis, I think. I don't really know what this one is about but I know it's been a highly anticipated horror novel for this year. So I'm excited because of course I'm reading it this month in case that's unclear. And then I have The Genesis of Misery by Neon Yang. One of my like mutuals I guess on Bookstagram highly recommended this book. It says it kind of just writing style wise I think has like Gideon the Ninth energy and everything about it sounded really fun. And I haven't read any of Neon Yang's books but I know that one of my other friends has liked their other novella series so I'm very excited to get to this one. We're on to my last pile. Isn't that exciting? I'm very excited because I want to put these books away so bad. I've been waiting for like a month to film this video. I was like okay I should like wait until this book arrives and then I should wait until this book arrives and it was like I want to wait until my locked tomb trilogy arrives but now Illumicrate's like we don't know when that'll be so it was like the right push to get me to film this now. I have Even Greater Mistakes Stories by Charlie Jane Anders. I've read a couple of things that Charlie Jane Anders has written and I've enjoyed them so I picked this up. We have Echo by Thomas Old Ho Hovelt. This is a horror novel about someone who is like hiking and finds something they're not supposed to I believe. I'm hoping it's creepy. It's all I want from horror books. I have The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. I earlier this year read Sundial by Catriona Ward and decided to pick up more of their books. So I have this one. I don't really know what this one's about. Haunted House book maybe? Unclear. I have The Book of Gothel by Mary McKimen. Oh I'm probably butchering that. This is I believe a retelling of Mother Gothel's story. The 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 woman from Tangled who takes Rapunzel. And yeah I don't know. It was it was on a highly anticipated list so I picked it up. A Record for a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. This is book three I think in the Wayfarer series. So I picked it up because I know the first one is out of print and I worry that all of them will eventually become out of print so I'm trying to get them all before that happens even if I'm not gonna read them for a while. I have Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro and I don't know what this book is about. It's very chonky but someone I follow really recommended it and I kind of liked the cover and when, what I did read about it intrigued me. Do I remember any of that? No but I picked it up. I have <laughs> I'm rolling everywhere. I have Locklands by Robert Jackson Bennett. This is the third book in the Foundry Side trilogy and I have the first two so I picked up the third. I have The Starless Crown by James Rollins. This is some kind of fantasy I believe. I don't know. I don't know what this is about but I picked it up because it was cheap and honestly because Tor Publishing has not let me down yet. <laughs> then I have Thistlefoot by Jenna Rose Nethercott. This looks like a Baba Yaga book. I just want to read more Baba Yaga books. I have this. Hopefully it's a Baba Yaga book because that's her house. So and lastly oh holy day I have Assassin's Quest the illustrated edition by Robin Hobb. Saw this for cheap, picked it up. I don't have book one and two. I will be obtaining those eventually. For now I have book three and it's beautiful on the inside. Like some of the the, the type is it's got like colorful pages they're blue got blue pages and then like normal type which is fine and a map at the front. It's very pretty. I picked it up. I hope I like the series. Okay 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 we did it. We did it. I did it. I did the thing. Okay so yeah those are all of the books that I've picked up in the last little bit. Let me know down below if any of these are books that you're really excited to read or if you've read them what you think about them because I would love to know if you loved these books or if you didn't like these books. I'll take that into consideration on what I read next. Yeah I'll see you whenever I do my next video. If there's lipstick on my teeth, no there isn't.